Hey guys, Maven here. Now, from 2001 through 2005, I was a WWE wrestler, and I'm going to react today to John Oliver, last week tonight's John Oliver. A few years ago, he did a segment on wrestlers, and I'm gonna give you my opinion. What he got right, what he got wrong, and all those in between. Let's check it out. All right, I can already tell you I don't agree with his opening. Total disclaimer here, I love John Oliver. I think he's hilarious. I love his takes on almost everything, whether it be something political, whether it be uh, something cultural, I think he's hilarious. I love the fact that he's not afraid to go into uncharted territory. That's why I was happy when he decided to take on wrestling. Pro wrestling legend King Kong Bundy has died at the age of 61. He came here, we were in Studio A, and he really? lifted me almost up to the ceiling. But he'll be missed, just 61 years old. These wrestlers dying early. That is true. And it's one of the things that unfortunately is just part of the territory. It can be many reasons why wrestlers, you know, pass pass early. Obviously lifestyle. It takes a lot to, to perform at a high level. And then to look a certain way, to be able to entertain a crowd, and then just a few hours later, rehash the entire day, almost living in a Groundhog Day scenario. It takes a lot. You know, for the time I was there, you know, I did a lot of things that were unhealthy and, you know, will probably shorten the, the span of my life. But there's been a lot of guys that have passed on away from us earlier. One of the most notable, is good good friend of mine, Andrew, Andrew Martin Test. I was with him a few days before he passed. It's a tough one. Here is the expected death rate by age group among the population as a whole. Here is the rate among former NFL players, and here is the rate among wrestlers. That is shockingly high. That's actually, you know, shocking. At the same time, it's not. And that's what's scary. The wellness policy, I can hope has changed things. This new batch of, of superstars, I think they make sure they take care of themselves a little bit different than we did. I hope this group now is the ones that buck that trend, you know, get that closer to normal, no, a normal range. You'd expect that line to be labeled test pilots who lied on their resume <laughs> or zookeepers who aren't just gonna let some f***ing baboon scream. <laughs> mouth there, buddy. Put some respect on my name. I do appreciate the way John can take a, a touchy subject, you know, about passing early and add humor. Some people might not. I do. My mother passed away in 04. I did her eulogy. Yeah, I told about four jokes in it. <laughs> not everybody's way and it's not everybody's cup of tea. I'm sure there's people that don't like that. Well, too bad. And it's impossible to overstate just how involved Vince is. He's not just CEO. He oversees storylines, scripts, everything. Even playing a fictionalized version of himself as the show's... That is 100% true. Vince oversees everything. Every aspect of it. I don't know how it is today. I'm talking about how it was when I was there. Nothing, and I mean nothing, got done in that business without going through Vince overarching villain, although his choices of how to dramatize that have been pretty questionable, whether it's him forcing female wrestlers to strip uh, or beating up his supposed illegitimate son, Hornswoggle, or... <laughs> Swoggle, I love Swoggle. Listen, Vince gets a lot of heat, and the business gets a lot of heat for doing stuff, and I'm not gonna sit here and say that objectifying women's a good thing, or you know, beating a Hornswoggle. Objectifying anybody's not good, but again, entertainment. If you watch a Tarantino movie and you watch Inglorious Bastards, are you going to seriously think that, that Tarantino's saying that the Nazis were good? Of course not. Wrestling's entertainment. Take it as such. Or turn the channel. What's up, boss? Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. What's good in the hood? Just holding it down, trying to take care of business. Keep it up. I'm a Yo, I gotta be honest. I forgot that existed. I am shocked Book allowed that. Book's one of those guys you do not mess with. Book is legit. He is a legit tough guy. I'm, sh I'm shocked Vince didn't get more backlash at that too. He's not getting away with that these days, I know that. Vince McMahon has always had this mentality about treating wrestlers like circus animals. 
all these wrestlers that have broke their backs making this living for years end up with nothing when it's over. And then they sort of take you out back and they put a slug in the back of your head and dump you out. In a, that's the life of a professional wrestler. Yeah, Brett's not wrong. For as much as it gives you, it doesn't prepare you for life after wrestling. You need to either A, be good at saving your money, B, be a superstar that lasts, or C, you build a big enough name. A Matt Cardona, Tommy Dreamer, someone that once you're off the big stage, you can trade on the value of your name to earn yourself a living. Yeah, I had a little bit of a name that I was able to trade on, but I quickly found out that I, I needed to find another another job, another source of income. But then that gets into the question, what does Vince owe you? Yeah, yeah, he's using you and the company uses you, um, but no one's holding a gun to anybody's head. No one's making them go out. No one's making them wrestle. I, I got a check for every time I wrestled and they promised me nothing afterwards. While well, you might reasonably think that the wrestlers employed by him are his employees, they're actually not. That They're merely independent contractors. Now, that is true. We always wrestle as 1099 independent contractors. Independent contractors that can't work for anyone else, get told when and where to be, and if you look at the rules of being an independent contractor, nah, not so much. Wrestlers are exempt from most discrimination and occupational safety laws. They also don't get paid annual leave, pensions, or health insurance. One of the toughest things about wrestling in the WWE is the whole health insurance thing and a pension. You know, I would always look at my, my friends who are working and, you know, putting towards their 401k and, you know, saving for their retirement, you know, or the company saving for their retirement. You better have willpower because if you can't save more rainy days come than you than you care to admit and you're going to be going through your savings very quickly trust me i know the irs states that independent contractors should be free to work when and for whom they choose well Vince's wrestlers sign exclusive contracts, well, so that's complete bullshit during my time in the company i signed three contracts i don't know if they've lowered their grip on talent, doing something as simple as an autograph signing. Back in my day, that was a no-go. You were not going doing any autograph signings if they didn't okay it, if they weren't the ones setting it up, if they weren't the ones reaping the benefit of it. While literally every major sports league has an off-season for athletes to recover, the WWE works its wrestlers year-round multiple times a week, both on TV and in untelevised so-called house shows. I talked in another video about how the pay structure set up, the difference between pay sheets and a downside guarantee. The way that the WWE would get away with having their talent on the road is by the downside guarantee versus the pay sheet structure. It paid so much and it was so financially better for you to be on the road. That's why guys would go for X amount of days each and every week, each and every town, and never get a break, never get a vacation. A lot of guys would get an injury, a small injury, and milk it for a couple extra weeks, strictly just to get a little bit of a break. But while you're out, you're off pay sheets, meaning you're making less money. Does it add out? Does it make sense? Well, that's to each person for them to decide. And big stars may be able to command big money for that, but not every wrestler is a big star. Case in point. And whenever we've gotten glimpses of wrestlers' contracts, they contain some astonishing clauses. One says if a wrestler is unable to wrestle for as little as six weeks because of an injury, the company can terminate their contract. Yeah, 100% true. I knew guys that they would put little clauses in their contract, and as long as they were drawing money, and as long as the office was happy with them, you'd never hear about them. But the moment that they weren't happy with them, yeah, we talked earlier about Test, Andrew Martin. I know they let him go a few times, and it was the small little clauses in his contracts that gave him the right to let him go. So that's 100% accurate. While well, another releases the company from all liability for damage resulting in permanent injury or death, even if caused by its own negligence. That was in my contract too. That exact phrasing was in my contract. I had a uh, attorney look over and actually pull that line aside. You could get permanently injured and the WWE could wipe their hands of it and owe you nothing. Are you okay with working under those conditions? Well, what was I gonna say? No, of course not. Yeah, sign the damn contract. How about your foot? Ah! I love this. Hit him with the bedpan, Steve. Hit him with the bedpan. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> With wrestlers working as independent contractors in a monopolised industry, largely free from meaningful oversight and able to be fired at any time, you wind up with an environment with huge potential for unsafe conduct. Before Lance McNaught died at 29... Uh, Lance Cade. I... Oh, man. He was in HWA with me. Lance Cade was just the nicest guy. And he died way, way too early. Everybody knows that if you get hurt, you work through it because you'll lose your spot. True. Another top wrestler. I got hit with something and it f***ing rung my bell and I got a concussion. But we were leaving for Europe the next day. So Doc was leaning on me going, do you want me to, do you have a concussion or can you go to Europe kind of thing? And I was just like, yeah. You pigs, I'll go to Europe, whatever. Now, Punk was in a, a, a different stratosphere than I was. Punk was a main eventer, I was not. I gotta admit, I was never encouraged to wrestle if I wasn't up to it. Was I encouraged to, to be on the shows? Absolutely. Was I encouraged to work through nagging pains and injuries? Absolutely. But that's just the business. You're not gonna get to a spot like Punk's. If every nagging injury keeps you sidelined, they're gonna find someone else, and why wouldn't they? I never felt like anyone saw me as just an, an indispensable tool. I know I was, but I never felt used you know, to that level. That's probably because he was drawing a lot more than I was and making them a lot more money than I was. Maybe if I was in the main event status like him, I would have felt like that because wrestlers' bodies regularly get smashed up and undergo general wear and tear, damage that's cumulative and can last a lifetime. Every morning when I wake up, and I mean every morning, there's not one morning that I roll over and get out of bed and it takes 15 to 20 minutes to, to get to where I'm not walking with a limp. I walk in pain every day. My back hurts every single day. It hurts right now. Yeah, as I sit here speaking into this camera, I have three herniated bulging discs. That said, knowing what I know now, now, would I have not gotten into it? Of course not. I still would have did it. If I had a chance, I'd do it all over again. But McMahon doesn't provide health insurance for his wrestlers for anything other than injuries that in occur inside the ring. That is true. I know one superstar who hurt themselves skiing and had to act like it happened in the ring. So had to walk around with an injury, wait till that person got to a house show and then act like the injury happened in the ring because the health insurance we had wouldn't have taken care of them then. Now, while I was there, I had several surgeries and every surgery, they always found me the best doctor. They took care of it. I never got a bill, never paid for anything. But I always knew if I was going to get injured, it had to be in the ring. Just something you have to accept. Do you have a reason why? these people would be dying under the age of 45? Why don't you ask yourself that question? I mean, why, why, why are you indicating that's my responsibility? These people are dead because... I'm asking you if it's in any way, shape, or form falls on your shoulders. I, I would accept no responsibility whatsoever for their untimely deaths, none whatsoever. I, the fact that he doesn't accept any responsibility is a little troubling. Human beings have to make their own decision. And if you're gonna put something bad in your body or if you're gonna do a, a job that's going to hurt your body, again, that's a decision that you made. The pain that I have, any health conditions you know that, that might arise, I'll never put any of the blame on Vince. I guess what I would rather hear is a little bit of empathy. Just empathy for the human condition, empathy for struggles that people might have. and. Um, again, the night my mom died, this man called me. He didn't have to, but he did. I mean, they wrestled for you. They, they were part for me, of they... your organization. They Wait worked a, a couple of hundred nights a year for you. A couple hundred nights? <laughs> my accountant did my taxes one year and told me that I had 102 days off. Now, an off day still included a travel day. So if you take my off days, one fourth of them were still traveling. Is it an off day when you leave a uh, town at 6 a.m., maybe arrive in your hometown at, let's say, 10 or 11, then have an hour drive home. And then once you get home, immediately put your stuff in the wash. And then you have to take care of bills and you have to take care of whatever around the house needs to be done. For that off day, I was working just as hard as I was the other days. They oh live God. this oh, life so. What are you doing, you weird, weird man? Yeah, Vince has a temper. That's for damn sure. Now, the company will say that they've completely transformed 
in recent years. And they have taken some positive steps, like banning chair shots to the head uh, and introducing concussion protocols. Although CM Punk's experience probably suggests that there may be room for some significant improvement there. If they put in a concussion protocol, it's new because it wasn't there when I was there. I had, I want to say, I think four recorded concussions and who knows how many went unrecorded. If they do have concussion protocol now, I'm, I'm very, very happy to hear that. The programme also provides for things like cardiovascular and brain testing, which is nice, although remember, they're still responsible for their own health insurance. And while the company says it pays for addiction treatment for former wrestlers... Which they do. Really and in 2012, I found myself in a, in a position to where, you know, treatment was a, was a possibility. The first call I got was from the WWE offering to pay for, for my treatment. And that was, at the time, seven years after I was an employee from them. I still get annually letters from the office offering treatment. I have no doubt that if I called them and told them that I needed to go to rehab next week, they would assist uh, in, in finding me a place. Rowdy Roddy Piper continued wrestling into his 40s and 50s, and just listen to him explain why. Wrestling, is, it has a tremendous entrance plan. You come in as, boy, here you are, you rock and roll and everything is wonderful. It's got no exit plan. They teach you everything it, it takes to become a star. They teach you how to handle being on the top of the mountain at that moment. But they don't teach you how to handle the other side of the mountain and going down. You know, your name value diminishing or your body diminishing or your earning potential diminishing. But is that their job? I don't know. I see where you can argue it both ways. What, what would you have me do at 49 when I, my pension plan I can't take out till I'm 65? I'm not going to make 65. It's just face facts, guys. I feel the same. <laughs> I, have no, I, I have no chance of seeing 65. Jake has no insurance. He didn't have any money to pay for the surgery, so we had to come up with some kind of solution. So we, we put up a page on Indiegogo to try to raise the money for his surgery. Real. Where are we at? Holy cow. 7,000. The good thing about our fans is they're always there for you. And again, I don't know, maybe it's because we don't have an off season. Maybe it's because we're putting on a show week in and week out. But wrestling fans are truly, truly the best. And I think there's also an appreciation for doing damage to your body in the name of entertainment. I think they see that and I think they, they show their thanks for that. And I thank them for that. But frankly, fans shouldn't be the ones shouldering that responsibility. That's true. Here's how bad it is. Even the NFL, for all its massive faults, <laughs> now offers players health reimbursement accounts and have established a legacy fund for older players who may be dealing with health issues. Yeah, but the NFL didn't start off with it, and it took a lot to get the NFL to where they are today. So maybe this will help. Wrestling fans, you cheered at Royal Rumble. You thrilled at Hell in a Cell. The point is, at WrestleMania 35, <laughs> why not join thousands of screaming fans? If, if Mr. McMahon doesn't like it, you know what he can do. Some wrestlers were definitely harmed from making this video. <laughs> Watching this video, I think John brings up a lot of good points. I would say 70 to 80% of everything he said is, is dead on and 100% the truth. But there always doesn't have to be a villain in every story. And I know John was making the, the WWE and Vince especially out to be a villain. Keep one thing in mind. No one's forcing guys into doing anything. The guys that are stepping in that ring and the young ladies that are stepping in that ring are doing so because they made that choice. He was accurate, but he only told one half of one side of the story. John talks about chair shots being outlawed. Well, it's a little too late for me to watch the worst receipt I ever got and the chair shot I'm still feeling. Click right here.